Uh, we want to look at uh, President Trump's agenda. Washington and Beijing have start nego started negotiating uh, a new normal on trade. The White House has remained tight-lipped on when the tariffs will go into effect. We're in the review process right now, uh, but certainly we expect China to make changes and stop the unfair trade practices that they've participated in yeah, for the, decades. The tariffs will take effect. Again, I'm not going to get, I just said, I'm not getting ahead of the review process, but I would anticipate that if there are no changes to the behavior of China and they don't stop the unfair trade practices, then we would move forward. This comes as President Trump is headed to West Virginia in just a few hours for a roundtable event on tax cuts and jobs. Joining me right now is the director of the National Economic Council, Larry Kudlow. Larry, it's great to see you. First off, a friend of yours for a long time. Congratulations, Larry. Love to see this new job for you. Thank you, Maria. Thanks. Always, I always, think, you're a great pal. We were co-anchors together we, at another network. Yes, we were, and it was uh, <laughs> really a, a beautiful thing. Let me let me ask you this, Larry, because we want to talk about trade. Yesterday, you made some really important uh, points to Stewart, and I think you turned the entire market around, frankly, when you told us that this was the beginning of a conversation with China and, and the beginning of basically coming to the table. What do you want to see out of this, Larry? Well, look, the, the essential point that the president has been working on for quite some time and you heard Sarah Sanders refer to it. You've got these unfair trading practices. Um, by the way, in WTO terms, many of them are illegal trading practices. And, you know, you know the list. It's uh, um, stealing technology or transferring technology, uh, stealing our intellectual property rights. They have high tariffs. They've got main barriers. There's not near enough market access for, you know, foreign uh, countries like the USA. So all that stuff has got to be discussed negotiated and um, eventually changed, eventually changed. And there is a process here. Um, there's going to be some back and forth, but there's also some negotiations, and we may talk about that. But that's the key point. Look, end of the day, China's unfair and illegal trading actions are damaging to economic growth for the U.S., for China, and the rest of the world. Yeah. They are preventing a much stronger global economy and they are doing damage to American exports. And, you know, the president, he's the first guy with the backbone in decades, Maria, to actually sit, go after it. Not yeah. just, you know, whisper it, but to go after it with um, at least preliminary actions. Well, you're right. I mean, we, we all get this on China because we know that they've been stealing our intellectual property for a long time and putting all these restrictions in place. Do you want to see the same kinds of restrictions in terms of China being allowed to invest in American industries? I mean, I know that there are like 10 industries in China that are off limits. They won't allow an American business to own more than 49 percent of a joint venture. Is that the kind of restrictions you'd like to see here in America? Well, look, I, I don't like to see restrictions, but as part of this um, potential deal, and I think we are going to get a deal uh, over a period of time, yes, I think these barriers will come down on both sides. And that's a key point uh, from the president. He understands perfectly well that economies do better when trading barriers are reduced rather than raised. You know, the tit-for-tat idea really doesn't work in economic terms over a period of time. Um, that includes market openings, and as you noted, that includes investment decisions as well. At the moment, the USA is properly wary of China. And, of course, the technology transfers and the hacking and the cyberspace hacking is part of that. Now, that could be changed and fixed. I hope it will. Right. But all that's on the table. Larry, I always refer to you as a growth guy. You always, as long as I know you, have, have focused on economic growth, supply-side economics, Reagan White House. So let me ask you what's possible. Knowing what the president has already put in place in terms of this tax cut reform, as well as the rollback in regulations, we're talking about about 2.9, 2.7 percent growth so far. What kind of growth number would you like to see or is possible for 18 and 19, Larry? Look, I think it's possible, Maria, to be in the 3 to 4 percent growth zone. The last three quarters, which is really the, you know, Trump's uh, first uh, year in office, the last three quarters we picked up from under 2 to 3.1% um, at an annual rate. Now, three quarters is not a lifetime. I get that. But it's a good start. And as I'm sure you know, you can look at the ISM numbers that came out this week. They're booming. Confidence is booming, both business and consumers. Uh, all that looks good. Capital X, CapEx, you know, investment spending, which is part of the tax cut design, has also picked up steam. I think the factory orders showed uh, core uh, CapEx, core investment spending, 
Maria, up to around 9%, 10% year on year. So that's good. You know, we're moving forward in the right direction. A lot of good things happening. And um, I believe that our idea, which was Reagan, which was supply side, uh, lower marginal tax rates, the Laffer curve, need I say more? Yep. You know, Maria, I come down here to work in the White House once every 35 years. <laughs> So this, I, I'm going to come down. It may be my last hurrah, but I want it to be a good one. Well, you, you see the president going to tout these tax cuts in West Virginia today, and now we're talking about a phase two tax plan. What do you want to see in that? I know you've been very focused on expensing and also focused on removing barriers for small business. Larry, what do you want to see in a, fac, a, a phase two tax reform plan, and will we see one? Well, I, I don't know. Um, it's probably not going to be immediate. It's being discussed now. Uh, we had discussion with uh, Ways and Means Chairman Kevin Brady, who's terrific. The president was talking to him uh, two days ago about this. I don't know. I can't predict the precise elements of the package, but I think, Marie, it's fair to say that most people uh, in the GOP and, and the President Trump, they do want the expensing to be permanent, and they do want the personal income tax rate reductions to be permanent. That's very high on everybody's list. And I think you'll get more bang for the buck on these tax cuts if you do make them permanent. There may be other issues. Uh, it's possibly to legislate um, inflation indexing of capital gains. That's a possibility. I don't want to predict the outcome. There are other good ideas floating around. But perhaps later this year, uh, we'll see something more concrete. With, with a better backdrop, Larry, obviously you're going to get a little inflation. You're going to see a little wage growth. That's, I guess, what you want to see. But do you worry that wage growth is going to get too hot? You know, Maria, real wages basically haven't jumped, let's see, since about the year 2000. So I'd love to see some hot wage growth. I never understood this idea. You've heard me on this before. More people working and more people getting uh, raises, you know, for their successful work effort, well, how can that be bad? I mean, that, then why do it? You know, why have policies? We, we, should, we should be so happy that there's some signs of better wages and some signs of additional employment. This is great stuff. It, growth does not cause inflation, okay? Inflation is by excessive money creation by the Fed. You'll know it, I think, if the dollar exchange rate falls a lot, Maria, that's a sign. To be, you'll know it in the tips market, uh, the inflation uh, expectations in the tips market. You might know it in the gold market. But my point is, I don't see it. The actual numbers are about 1.5% core inflation. Um, gee, growth is wonderful. That's what we're here to help. We want to remove barriers, including trading barriers. But I want to remove tax barriers and regulatory barriers and energy barriers.